Hi there, I'm just gonna walk you through the process I went through to get an SVG export from Blender. I, uh, it was new to me and I watched a few YouTube videos myself and they got me most of the way there. I just ran into a couple of hiccups that I wanted to walk you through. So essentially what it is, you know, I made this 3D model and um, I, I wanted an SVG asset out of it in the end. Um, I was gonna print it on a, I'm actually laser engraving it on a, a 2D surface, so. Um, Anyway, essentially what the uh, the process does is essentially what the uh, what the line art feature does in Blender, where it adds outlines to your uh, to your model. You can export those as vector art, which is super convenient, especially if you want to do any additional manipulation to it. Um, so I'll show you how that's done. Uh, it all happens by way of an add-on so up in preferences come to the add-ons i've already typed in svg but you'll want to activate this freestyle svg exporter add-on and you'll notice some things appeared over here um, so we're going to go through we're actually going to walk through um, straight down the line these three um, different categories of settings here first in the render settings you want to make sure freestyle svg export is clicked on which it did automatically when i activated the, the add-on also click on freestyle as part of the render then uh, here in the output settings we just want to make sure we have a location and a, and a file name set here so we know where to find our svg once it's been rendered and then in the view layer, we also want to make sure we click on freestyle here. Um, these settings, you can pretty much leave the same. I'm going to just basically take the, the most basic approach possible, but you can go in and, and tinker with all kinds of things. Um, this sample number here, now, um, in a number of videos I watched, um, they recommended fairly low numbers. In one video, they even recommended one. So I'm just gonna do that to show you what happens, just so we can go through the whole process of uh, debugging that I went through. <laughs> so um, I'll just set that to one to show you what happens there. And then all you have to do is come up here to uh, render image, and you don't even have to export anything from here, that's it. Um, I've got some wonky render settings apparently, that's very dark, but it doesn't matter, that's not the export. So, um, just by virtue of having rendered the image um, and not even saved anything, it creates a file for me and mine is uh, saved on the desktop. So, this towers001.svg and you can see, um, just by previewing the image here, I mean, we've got basically what we want. You know, it's left out a couple of little lines here, but I mean, by and large, it's taken care of most of the work for me. I'm sure that I could mess with settings and get, you know, more lines to show up to. Um, anyway, so we're off to a good start there. But the one thing, so I, my preferred vector editor is Affinity Designer, and I'm not sure how the others handle it, but when I went to open this with Affinity Designer, I got this message failed to open. So uh, this is where um, coming back to some of my uh, web development skills from a prior life came in a little handy. Um, instead of opening with an image editor, you can also open an SVG with a text editor. So I'm gonna open my favorite code editor, Nova. And you know, it's a bunch of I mean, depending on how familiar you are with code, it's, you know, a bunch of gobbledygook, perhaps. But um, I went through all kinds of permutations here, trying to figure out what it was that was exactly wrong with this code that Blender was outputting. Um, it turns out the entire problem was just with the character encoding. Um, Affinity Designer, and again, I'm not sure if this is the same of other apps like Inkscape or Illustrator. Um, but it doesn't like the ASCII encoding, so all we have to do is replace that with UTF-8. That's the, like that's the hyphen character, I guess. UTF-8, and then save that. And uh, then once we try once again to open this with Affinity Designer, it will. Um, so this is awesome. Um, I've got actual vector line art here, but here's where that other setting 
comes into play um, the uh, what was it called again the uh, the density the sampling that's what it was sampling so we, we sampled at a um, resolution of one which um, if you click into your artwork here you'll see it creates a point at every one distance whatever that is if that's a point or a pixel or whatever but that is a lot of points which um, is not only just a pain to deal with but also makes the file sizes enormous to minimize that especially given that this line art is mostly straight lines i do not need that many points i would prefer to just have one at each end and i haven't found a setting that allows for that level of granularity in the output settings but um, as you saw before i had an output uh, a sample output of a hundred and let's render that again and then come back into the file in Nova and replace this again and save it Then we'll come over here and reopen the file in Affinity Designer and then if you have a closer look um, there are far fewer points, which makes this much easier to deal with. Now, I'm gonna go in and you know do a bunch of cleanup and just delete a lot of these points because, like I said before, I um, I only want one point at each end of these straight lines. So you know I'll be I'll be removing all of these, and it you know it'll be a bit of a process, but not nearly as, as difficult as it would have been. Anyway, so there you have it, uh, vector art straight out of Blender.